Workflow. It's one of those buzzwords, workflow. What's your workflow? What's my workflow? Basically, when people ask that, hey, what's your workflow? They're asking, how do you interact with your computer? That's basically what they want to know. And I get this question all the time from viewers of the channel. They want to know, you know, what desktop environment or window manager am I running? They want to know, do I use, you know, virtual workspaces? I'm obviously on a multi-monitor system. They want to know about how I interact with the three monitor setup that I have. Uh, all that goes into basically what is your workflow. So today I just wanted to make a quick video discussing DT's workflow. Let's get started. So there are three big things you need to know about my workflow. First of all, I have a triple monitor setup. I have three monitors sitting in front of me. That plays a big part of why I choose to use the programs that I choose to run. So because I have multi-monitors, I like having virtual workspaces, a lot of virtual workspaces among the various monitors. Because I like that, I also like tiling window managers. Tiling window managers handle multi-monitors and virtual workspaces, quite frankly, much better than floating window managers in your traditional desktop environments. Plus, because I have such large screen real estate, I don't want to be dragging things with the mouse all over, you know, from the far left monitor to the far right. I don't want to have to resize windows manually with the mouse. I like being able to hit a key combination and a window goes exactly to what monitor I want it to go to in the occupied space that I want it exactly. It really helps, especially doing what I do as far as this YouTube channel because I'm capturing so much of my desktop on my videos. Uh, basically, these uh, tiling window managers really help the placements of the windows in my scenes here in OBS, which is what I use to record my videos. Let me give you some four examples. Let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop. So this is me recording the middle monitor of my three monitors. I have monitor one, monitor two, monitor three. I'm recording the second monitor. Every time you guys see me recording my desktop, I'm recording one monitor, the second monitor. What you guys don't see is the third monitor. What is the third monitor? Well, the third monitor typically has OBS on it. So if I opened OBS, this is actually going to open on the second monitor. But this is what I do on the third monitor you guys never see. I open OBS, and that's all the third monitor does is it's recording OBS. Uh, the other thing, I open one other program. I typically open a file manager. Uh, Typically, I just open whatever. It might be a graphical file manager like PC Man FM, which I know I've got on the system, or it might be my terminal-based file manager, VIFM. I open one of them for sure. And then what I do is typically I resize this. I don't need the file manager taking up all that half the screen. I typically make OBS take up about three quarters of the screen and the file manager take up about a quarter of the screen. And then I go to the directory where I am recording these videos. Why do I need this? I, well, basically, I like having visual confirmation when I click start recording that a new file appear, appears here. You'll be surprised how many times you're recording in OBS and you think you hit start record, but you really didn't, or you stop recording and you really didn't. So I like it having the file manager up so when I hit start recording, I see a new file appear. If it doesn't appear, I immediately know something's not right, instead of me talking sometimes for 5, 10, even 15 minutes in a very lengthy video clip, and then realize I didn't record any of that. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world. So I've learned, always have a file manager up when you're recording in OBS, just for that visual confirmation that, hey, I'm actually recording. So that is the third monitor. The monitor you guys never see. It's got OBS, and it's got the file manager. That monitor is always the same. Now, the second desktop I've already told you is what I record. That's typically where I do whatever it is I'm doing on video, whether that be uh, me recording a, a virtual machine of some Linux distro, some review, or 
uh, opening up a terminal and doing something at the command line, doing a command line tutorial, whatever I'm doing happens on the second screen. Now, on the first screen, you guys never see the first screen either. That's typically where I do things like I have a web browser open and I switch to this scene in OBS. So on my first monitor, typically what I do is I'll open Firefox. It's the browser I'm typically recording. And then what I do is go to whatever it is, a page I want to record. Say it's a news article or something. Say it's I'm doing one of my taking into account episodes. Typically I go into floating mode instead of tiling mode. And then I resize this. What's, how do I resize it? How do I know what to size it to? Well, I go to my scene here in OBS. I go back to this scene. The, the browser window will appear. But I can, I just play with it until it's the perfect size. So it needs to be about that size. And this could be on any monitor. The second monitor, if I actually want you guys to see it on the desktop. But typically, I move it over to the first monitor. You guys don't see it on my desktop view. The only time you see it is when I switch to this scene here, what I have labeled in OBS as a browser view. Now I have several scenes very similar to this browser uh, scene I have. I also have one called terminal view, is what I've got it labeled, and that's very similar. I just go to my desktop and I open a terminal, I uh, switch to floating mode, and then I just resize the terminal to whatever size would fit this layout here. So I just keep resizing the terminal on my desktop until it looks right in this scene and then I'm good and then I can do whatever I'm doing. A lot of times what I'm doing is simply showing you guys my IRC chat channel, you know, so I can show you guys the chat on screen. Now back to my desktop. So this is again the middle monitor. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is the fact that I'm using BSPWM today. BSPWM is a tiling window manager but it doesn't matter what tiling window manager I'm in. It could have been DWM, Qtile, Awesome, Xmonad, i3, Herbsluft. They all function basically the same way. Uh, they put programs in a specific monitor on a specific workspace at a specific size. Uh, they all pretty much do the same thing. There's, there's some differences between them but uh, no real differences as far as workflow. My workflow is the same regardless of what tiling window manager I use. Uh, one of the things you guys often see me do, of course, is rec recording uh, VirtualBox installations. So this is me launching VirtualBox and I can launch uh, any of the VMs I have. Let's go ahead and launch Ubuntu Budgie 1904. Because this is a tiling window manager, I need to move one of these to a different workspace. So I'm gonna move this to a different workspace so the VM itself is here instead of the main settings and everything that you saw with VirtualBox. I can control F by the way to make the virtual machine full screen and then you guys you know, if you didn't know it was a virtual machine you would think I was just recording my desktop right you don't see the panel polybar in BSPWM anymore which is annoying I hate seeing people record in VMs and you still see the host machine. I don't like to see the host machine. I get rid of the menus in VirtualBox. I get rid of uh, the panels and bars and everything on the host machine. I make everything full screen to the proper screen resolution. That way it just looks better. So that is my typical workflow as far as when I'm actually doing stuff, like real stuff, content creation. You guys see exactly what I do in OBS and how I use my three monitors. Now, what if I'm not actually recording video? What am I doing, you know, when I'm just relaxing, having fun at the computer? Well, typically, like everybody else, most of it just involves me opening a web browser. Uh, by the way, I've, typically I launch everything with D-Menu. So I, I launch D-Menu and I type Firefox or whatever browser I want to open. And I just open Firefox on one monitor, full screen. I rarely have Firefox tiling. It's usually full screen on one monitor. Well, either one or two, typically, on the first monitor and the second monitor, I always have a browser open. That takes care of one of my three monitors. Uh, typically, on the other monitor is where I typically do other stuff. I typically have a terminal open a lot. I'm typically doing things in the file system, typically, you know, CD, LS, and things like that. I'm editing config files, working in Vim. I usually have a terminal, terminal emulator or two open. Uh, I mentioned I do everything 
launching programs for the most part in dmenu. I have several dmenu scripts, like for editing my files. I have this key combination that brings up this dmenu, edit a config file, and then you can see I can edit my awesome config, my bash config, bspwm, dwm, herbsluft, i3, polybar, etc. I could just type something. For example, let me type my x, sx, hkd, <laughs> Uh, that's such a horrible name, but this is my simple x hotkey daemon rc file. So this is my key bindings here in BSPWM. So if I page down, you can actually see some of my key bindings. For example, application key bindings, super alt plus key. So super alt plus l brings up my links web browser, and by default, it opens up links at uh, my gopher site. I have a gopher site at gopher colon slash slash distro dot tube. This is my gopher page. Really interesting. Plain text. I love gopher. It's so much better than HTTP. I wish everybody would get on board with gopher, but you know, it's kind of dead technology, unfortunately, but I love gopher. So that's my key binding to open links. I had a key binding for opening um, Ursi, which was super alt and I. So this just opens up my chat client here. Uh, super alt in opens up newsboat. And then I had a, a key combination or key binding for, uh, uh, of course, my VIFM file manager, super alt V to open up the file manager, VIFM. It looks like the last folder I was in was in my wallpapers folder. Well, that's VIFM. Pretty neat file manager. Close all that out. Super shift C is my key binding to close. So that was some of the application key bindings I had. I, I only have about four applications key binded, uh, just the ones I use on a regular basis. Everything else I just launch from dmenu. By the way, I have several dmenu scripts also hotkeyed. I have alt plus control plus key as uh, dmenu launchers. So I have alt plus control plus enter. Just opens up dmenu itself where I can just type the name of a program such as Firefox and hit enter and it would launch. I also have several others. I have alt control E which you've already seen. Edit my config files. I'm gonna escape out of that. Alt control S launches Surferall. This is really neat. So Surferall has about a hundred or so search indices that you can search from. So if I wanted to search, I don't know, duck, duck, go. I could type duck and you know hit enter and then what do I want to search on DuckDuckGo for? How about the word Linux? Hit enter and it opens up the Lynx web browser at DuckDuckGo with the search results for Linux. I also had a dmenu script alt control and M for system monitoring programs so I could launch HTOP, Glances, GTOP, IFTOP, IOTOP, IP, TRAF, NMON, S2E and then just quit out of the the D menu script. So let me launch GTOP just as, as an example here. And it's kind of slow to load up there. Of course, part of the problem is it wants to uh, show information about all 24 threads of my 12 core 24 thread thread ripper. <laughs> that probably doesn't help things, but that is GTOP. Kind of a neat program. By the way, one of the things I often do, of course, is push things to my GitLab page. I, all my config files, I have a GitLab repository that I push them to. So you guys. If you want any of my configs, just go get them. So, for example, say I added a new key binding for something here. So, I'm going to do a 3YY, which is yank these three lines in Vim. And then what I'll do is I'll just paste them right here. So, I'm going to add a new key binding for something. I don't know what I need a key binding for. How about we do a key binding to launch well, HTOP. I don't really need a key binding to launch HTOP, but we'll do super alt plus H. We'll launch the ST terminal and then HTOP. And then I'm going to write and quit that. Now let me open up a terminal and I've got git alias to the word config. So config add dash u. I'm going to add all the files that I've edited as far as my git files. And then I'm going to, of course, do a commit. So config commit dash m, and then I need to leave a message. I'm going to say edited xshkd. That's a good commit message. And then, of course, we need to do a push. So typically this would be git push, but because I have mine aliased, config push. And then enter my username, and then, of course, the password. 
and it pushed that to my GitLab page. So if I open up Firefox and we go to my GitLab page, once Firefox finally loads up the YouTube channel here, and that pushed that, by the way, to my .files repository, you'll see last update was just now. I edited SXHKD. So I pushed that modified file to my GitLab page. You guys want my GitLab uh, configs, by the way, just go get them. Uh, everything is here. So in dot config, I have my configs for awesome, BSPWM, Herbs Luft, Openbox, my Polybar configs, Qtile, the SXHKD, <laughs> my old Termite configs when I was using Termite, VIFM is here, XMOBAR, uh, by the way, I have my XMONAD configs somewhere in here. I have my builds for DWM, Surf, ST, and then of course, the most important thing is my wallpaper collection. I have pushed Oh, more than 200 wallpapers. So any of you guys want, if you're asking me about my wallpapers, just go grab the whole pack of wallpapers from my GitLab. Everything is here. Uh, most of it is nature wallpapers. That's typically what I like. There's a few abstract art images in there, but most of it is nature. So there you have it. That's just a small little glimpse into DT's workflow. Multi-monitors, tiling window managers, multiple workspaces. Every monitor has multiple workspaces to work on, which means I can have several different programs open on their own workspaces, which makes recording various scenes in OBS so much easier. I could never go back to just using one workspace. Back when I used Windows, you know, about, about 12 years ago, they, Windows didn't have virtual workspaces. You just had the one desktop to work with. And I could never go back to that. It seems so strange and alien now not to have just infinite amounts of workspaces to work on. So that, that's my workflow. Three monitors. Monitor one is almost always the browser monitor. Monitor three is almost always OBS, especially if I'm recording. It's strictly dedicated to OBS. Monitor two is the work monitor, whether that be me working in a text editor or a terminal, whatever it is I'm doing. The monitor two is typically where actual work gets done. Oh, editing things in GIMP, for example, whatever I happen to be doing. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, First Chris, Second Chris, DJ, Dylan, George, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sam, and Willie. They're the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show wouldn't be possible. Also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen. Those guys, they rock. They help support the channel. If you'd like to support me, please do so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.